Okay, guys. You know what? I'm gonna leave that in there, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this may or may not be an interesting one. Uh, someone else came out and poked around in here. And the story I got was that this board is dead with no LEDs. Now, regardless, this could be a good educational opportunity. I wanna talk first, uh, you know, one of the first steps to working on something like this, a we something that might be a weird glitch. <laughs> By the way, if you notice these capacitors, this has been featured in another video. This site has horrible power, just horrible. And we've been, you know, in conversation with the customer trying to get this figured out because all kinds of equipment just has gnarly electronic deaths over here. But um, anyways, with a weird electrical glitch, um, the first thing we want to do is a power reset. And I want to talk about why that's important and what it does. So if you see these ICs up here, now, I don't know, there are different components that come in that same package, but one of the things that those can be is voltage regulators. And even if you've got like a switch mode power supply type deal, which that may or may not be, I, I don't see an inductor, so I'm not sure about that. Anyways, um, one thing that can happen with uh, switch modes and these voltage regulators is that if your input gets too low, see, in order for that voltage regulator to be stable, the input has to be something like at least at, at the very minimum two and a half volts over the output. You have to have extra voltage there so that the, the trimming down of that voltage can be uh, consistent and stable. If you have a power fluctuation that gives a trash input into one of these what it'll do is it'll lose control and now your logic is trying to operate on a lower than normal voltage and what that does is it causes your logic thresholds to not be met so now you have like a good bit a bad bit good bit bad bit and the whole thing just gets confused now notice this unit was left off so we we already have a power set in the pro power reset in the process. We're just going to power it on and see what happens. Okay, so I do have power into the board through the fuse. Now, to really troubleshoot a board, you need a schematic for the board. But the topography of boards is normally pretty logical and that's because they have to be that way in order to fit all of this crap on a board but in searching for power in what you're going to look for is a beefier connector now it could be that one but we notice this fuse down here so it's got to be that one also your relay banks assuming that they are controlling high voltage loads which they most certainly are these are going to be like the high voltage solenoids and stuff that's going to be right near power they're not going to put those on the opposite side of the board because then you have to try to run high voltage traces through the board so when you really get down to it a lot of it makes sense so i've got power into the board and something's dead now is this going to be a short on the logic circuit not externally i'll tell you that all of these external sensors inputs output that's all protected now your high voltage stuff that's going to be protected by a fuse but right now we're clearly missing logic voltage that is not going to be an external short all of this stuff is really well protected and i'm willing to bet that these are the resistors that are protecting those sensors I have a video on how these circuits work. So right now, I'm not gonna go after anything external at this point. Uh, what I will be going after, some boards have multiple power inputs. That's always something in the back of my head, but um, this portion up here really looks like a DC supply portion. 
So we're gonna take a look at that and make sure everything looks right up there. Now when looking at this stuff, you gotta use your eyes as well. There's a lot of bad components you can spot just, just by looking around. But that is a major problem and we're gonna have to get that replaced. This, this is most likely some inductor, I think they call it a reactor actually, that probably has something to do with smoothing out uh, the kind of noise that the whole inverter system is going to be generating. I don't know. I mean, I'm really pushing the limits on what I know about this, uh, this board design. All right. So this is going to be our DC bus voltage, which is always quite high relative to mains. Here we've got 300 volts DC. Now, one thing I was mentioning about the main board is I didn't see an inductor. So is it possible that instead of having a switch mode over there, that just taking this already generated DC voltage and bringing it over, stepping it down and using that for logic? Maybe, I mean, I, I just don't know. But, you know, because if, if your input is DC, you're not really gonna need an inductor so much. The purpose of the inductor is all that hash that comes from converting uh, AC to DC. Anyways, I've got my 300 volts here, but if I jump downstream to the bottom of this wire, I've got nothing down here. So, uh, let me get in there. It's hard to probe, I got nothing. So this wire is burnt through completely. So we're just gonna start by replacing that wire and see what happens from there. Now here, I'm just using the impedance of my meter to drain down this DC bus voltage. You don't wanna go reaching in here uh, right away. Now it can take a long time to drain down, but even the impedance of my meter is enough to start pulling this thing down. Uh, if I had a like a, a low Z meter, it would be even better, but this is good enough, so I'm gonna wait a while until we get that uh, pulled down. Here's the repaired wire. The other wire was either eight or 10, looked more like, or, sorry, the other wire was either 12 or 10. It looked more like 12. I just went with 10, which is perfectly fine. Um, I'm not a huge fan of 10 gauge spades, but that's what the manufacturer used. Uh, if you're gonna find a burnt spade, most likely it'll be a 10 gauger. But anyways, uh, go ahead and, well, hang on, i to get my stuff out of the way. <laughs> Got her hanging. All right, I'm standing over here and covering my crotch. Don't want a, another short to cause a blowout right in my face. She lives. Now, I've been guilty of this too many times, so mostly I'm preaching to myself, but I will say with VRF stuff or anything complicated, you have, you have to be aware of simple stuff. You can't overlook the simple things and dive straight into this madness. There's too many times that it's, it's something simple and you'll miss it if, if you let all of this just get you um, flustered. She's booting up now, so it does seem to be, and it would make sense from a design standpoint, that if you're already generating DC, why have a separate switch mode over here? Just use like a DC buck converter or something of that circuit design to steal it and then power all your logic from there. So, in, and in case you don't know, motors and things, heavy loads, those are all uh, transformers, solenoids. Well, I shouldn't say solenoids universally, but in HVAC, a lot of solenoids are AC. But when it comes to logic, always DC. Has to be DC, it has to be clean, has to be predictable, no variation, because the variation itself is the logic. So you have to have DC for logic. Anyways, uh, I got to let this thing boot up, might have other error codes, might have other issues, but she's at least alive now. Oh yeah, and turns out that little 
<laughs> Frankenstein capacitor repair there is working out great. Story behind that is I, I needed bipolars and obviously can't find those locally. I mean, they're rare anyways, but uh, had to had to make some. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, she's still running, looking pretty good. I <clears throat> cleaned all the indoor filters. Uh, if you're not used to looking at these systems, um, these pressures can look extreme, but they're, they're really not. These, these systems run at extreme pressures. Discharge looking pretty good. Um, I'm not going to overanalyze this. This is <laughs> today is about getting it going. So let's go look outside and see what we got going on. Just chugging away like the little engine that could. Quiet little guys. I love these. You know, this unit has been extra finicky today. Uh, normally Mitsubishi's aren't like that. Is there anything else going on? Maybe, we, we'll just have to see. Um, <laughs> this poor little guy's just been put through the ringer. Um, man, this thing, this thing. Now, I don't know that this was the result. I don't know that that right there was the result of a power glitch. Probably not. I mean, it looked like it just normal rub through. Nothing, nothing weird going on. But this thing, besides that, whatever weird power stuff did happen over here yesterday might have also just... <laughs> sent this little guy into a tailspin i really don't know what what else to say about it than that is just it seems like there were multiple kind of issues besides that with the overall kind of logic in here being sort of confused for a bit everything seems to be back to normal so i think it's just going to be one of those deals where I have to give it some time and make sure nothing else pops up but we got them heat, and that's what matters the most.